Welcome to Portland Fire Bureau's webcast. Today we're going to be having a conversation with some local um, uh, and state experts uh, on radiation issues uh, with the recent developments uh, that we're all aware of. And we're going to do a little roundtable discussion here and talk about some specifics. Uh, let me introduce our, our guests first and then I'll have some introductory statements and then we will go into some discussions with a follow-up at the end. Uh, we have um, Daryl Leon uh, from Environmental Public Health, a health physicist. And we also have Gail Shibley from the state, State Environmental Public Health Administrator. And Dr. John Ju is our uh, EMS uh, uh, coordinator for uh, county EMS. He's a uh, uh, Multnomah County coordinator. And then we also have uh, Dr. Richard Lehman uh, from also your state, your official title, Richard? I'm a medical epidemiologist with the Public Health Division. Perfect, okay. Let me uh, start with just a couple introductory statements. I want to make clear what, what our mission is today on this short podcast. Uh, number one, we're trying to dial this in and, and give it some perspective. There are a, a lot of media uh, outlets uh, with a lot of information. We want to make sure that you get uh, specifically what you need uh, that causes you concern. Um, so perspective compared to disasters that have been happening around the world, very, very important. So we're going to concentrate on what's important for you and your family and to uh, ensure that there are no risks for you. We will have these experts together. The second thing that I want to emphasize is that we brought these people together because we want to talk with one voice. We want to say the same thing so that you can understand that this, this is, is consistent and that we are speaking with folks that understand radiation and health implications, if any. Also, Portland Office of Emergency Management has the auspices to uh, have an umbrella over this whole response and that Portland Fire and the Metro UASI Urban Area Security Initiative region has, has over the last years, especially since 9-11, obtained new federally purchased equipment, including RAD monitoring and um, medical care point issues. We have procedures, training consistently with all of these partners so that we are prepared in case anything natural or man caused happens. Um, and so let me open this up to Gail and let you speak a little bit about what, from the health division, what you would like the folks to know. Sure. Well, first of all, Grant, I I'm delighted to, to join you and, and, and my other colleagues and partners here. Uh, it really is part of our ongoing uh, coordination, communication, and, and monitoring of the situation in, in Japan. Um, there's no question, there's a horrible tragedy there in that country, and, and our, our, our hearts and, and, and thoughts go to, to all the people uh, there. Um, we are part of, of a nationwide uh, uh, monitoring effort uh, together with uh, other states, uh, territorialities, uh, throughout the Pacific region, throughout the, the, the entire country, and have been uh, for more than uh, 20 years. Um, this is not a monitoring effort uh, that we have stood up uh, as in response to, to, to the events in Japan. We have been collecting uh, uh, air precipitation radiation data uh, for more than 20 years, and I'm happy to provide some information about, about what we're finding. Um, which is uh, nothing above uh, 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 what, what we see all the time. But, um, but the most important thing is to know that um, uh, state public health uh, is, is the lead agency, environmental public health, which is my responsibility as the administrator for the state of Oregon, is in very close and constant uh, contact and coordination with all of the other states, uh, with a wide range of federal partners, uh, including the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, uh, Homeland Security, uh, Environmental Protection Agency, Health and Human Services, uh, Center for Disease disease control and prevention, uh, it, the list goes on. Um, and uh, we receive uh, updated information, uh, try to understand, uh, as, as we all are, what's going on in Japan. And uh, uh, our most important mission is to make sure that people have the information they need to keep themselves and their families safe. Uh, we are doing that now, um, and we will continue to do that as this situation unfolds. So if they had a question today, uh, besides the website, which we will have on, you can check on, on our website, uh, we'll give a link to the state website. Are there, is there a number also that they can call or if they want to do it by telephone? There, there is a number. Uh, I think it's a 1-800 number or an 877 number, and that information is also up on the website. 
um, and try to provide, you know, there, there are lots of questions coming in. There are lots of angles to different questions, uh, trying to be um, helpful, accurate, consistent, and complete uh, can, can be a bit of a challenge when, when we're all uh, trying to do our jobs uh, in addition. And so uh, we, we have uh, provided some, some taped information up there um, and, and also provided Q&A on our website. So encourage people to, to check that out and make sure they have the latest. We always update it with both the date and the time. Thank you, Gail. Uh, we've had much concern, obviously, uh, most people have been watching the news, about health concerns. Dr. Ju, what, what can you tell uh, people about uh, issues with health? Yeah, I think in, in contrast to a lot of other incidents, we actually know a lot about this type of incident, in particular from Chernobyl. There's a couple of reinforcing points. Number one, the science is actually quite there. Uh, we actually do know that it, the primary danger is in the immediate vicinity of the reactor, be, de de being defined as 10 to 20 miles from the reactor as well. This is not like a fallout. This is not like any other uh, nuclear bomb. This is uh, basically a meltdown of a nuclear reactor. In Chernobyl, the vast majority of the adverse consequences were confined to Chernobyl immediate vicinity. There was a, a slight uh, increase in thyroid cancer, but we also know that. But I think the point we want to say is that, number one, the science is there. Number two, the relationships that we've built from top off uh, and before top off are there. And number three, uh, we as a community will act to protect you and the environment and your family together. My message primarily is to the providers of medical services, including fire, law enforcement, EMS, and dispatch as well. So we got your back. We're watching. And Grant and I will actually make sure that you don't get into trouble or, and your families. I won't address the public health aspects. Uh, Dr. Lehman will. But I think the point is that we're, we have the monitoring capabilities, we have the expertise, and we have the countermeasures if we need to. I do want to say, uh, 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 Dr. Ju mentioned an acronym. I want to try to yeah. stay away from it. Uh, the the media uh, on the web and also on TV just are replete with all kinds of, of acronyms. And top off is, is top officials exercise that we had here in 2007, and it was a 20 to 30 million dollar drill with five to 10 thousand people. Uh, we were uh, featured prominently there. We learned a lot from that, and because of that, uh, we have jumped up a notch in case anything ever happens with all kinds of hazards. And believe me, there are uh, a tsunami on our coast or any other natural disaster will dwarf what we're talking about. That's the perspective I was talking about. We have equipment. We are very well equipped for this as well as other eventualities. If a question came about what kind of meds do I take? And I heard this on CNN and I can go to the drugstore. Uh, what should you tell the people about anything? Should they worry about that? And what can you tell them about medicine? Asking me or Dr. Leland? Yeah. Dr. Leland. Okay. <laughs> Oh, well, yes. all right. Uh, Grant, uh, with regard to medicines and things people might need to do, uh, we are watching the situation closely, as Gail had mentioned, it, both in Japan and also uh, tracking what's going on here. And there is simply no reason to take a medication at this point. There is a medicine. You probably heard a lot about it. It's called potassium iodide. Some people call it. KI, and I can tell you I'm not taking it, uh, and uh, the reason is we, we just don't have a, uh, uh, any medical reason to do that at this point. There is, uh, there is uh, access to uh, potassium iodide if we did uh, need it. There are other steps that people can uh, potentially take if we got into a situation, say if, uh, if uh, we had a similar event uh, at uh, a reactor much closer to us, uh, but uh, this is simply not something that people uh, people need to do. There are some issues with potassium iodide uh, for certain people, people who have allergies to, uh, to iodine, uh, people who have uh, chronic uh, kidney disease, it can potentially uh, be dangerous in those situations. Uh, but the key message is you just don't need to be taking it at this point. There is no, uh, there is no indication. I do want to mention uh, our job uh, at the Public Health Division is to protect the public's health. And we are tracking the situation in Japan. We are tracking the situation here. And if 
the situation changes, we are prepared to do what we need to do to protect the public's health. I just want to be clear about that. Thank you, Doctor. Um, we'll finish out with uh, maybe a few comments from Daryl Leon. He's a health physicist from State Radiation Protective Services. He's a field person. He understands the physics of it. Radiation is very predictable physically. It, it really is. And so we can, we can uh, get prepared and, and the experts know what to tell you. There are many things that are, have been on the web and on, on CNN, for example, that are very confusing, a lot of terms. Can you dial it in a little bit in, in, a case, in, in the sense that this happened in Japan? Why is it something that we don't have to worry about here? With regards to the radiation coming from these facilities in Japan, the radiation is, the particles are being released from the site and these particles are being released and coming over the ocean and actually being washed out long before they reach the coast of Hawaii even, or even of Oregon. So these things are, are definitely not going to be a concern for the, pers for the people of Oregon. Okay. So basically what we're talking about is, is extremely low levels that we're not even going to be able to detect here. And these, these are uh, no, normal uh, levels that uh, just in your daily life, uh, there are situations uh, that you, you, would, you would have an exposure uh, uh, that, that uh, would concern you more than this would, um, depending on where, where you work and what, what you're involved with, whether you fly in planes, et cetera. So uh, unless there's any other comments, is there any other thing, anything anybody would want to add? want to keep this very short, want to keep to the point. And again, in conclusion, medicine, meds, uh, potassium iodide, th these are not needed here. Adverse effects, if you have any other specific questions, you can go to the website, which will be on uh, as a link to state health on our site. Uh, the second thing is we are all agree, uh, the experts all agree in the state of Oregon. We are prepared, we are communicating. And follow up on the, the site phone number or the website, and there's a just a, a bunch of, of particular, very specific guidelines you can uh, uh, obtain there, or you can go on Portland Online. Uh, there are some uh, other uh, minor radiation um, education docs that you can get on Portland's website, but it's mostly about our, our capability, our monitoring capability, what we have on our team. Uh, or you can go on Portland Online to get uh, with Portland Office of Emergency Management has some good documents. Yes, Gail. Grant, I just want to reinforce to folks that um, from the standpoint of public health, um, we are taking um, any potential risk um, very seriously. We are, have organized ourselves uh, to, to manage um, the, 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 the interest, the concern, and the information, um, and are in constant communication and coordination uh, assessing with the help of, of uh, really key experts uh, across the spectrum uh, to, to understand, assess, analyze, and then communicate uh, information that is helpful and actionable to Oregonians so that you have the information you need to keep yourselves and your family safe. I also want to add that to that point is that none of us here are either um, uh, uh, hoarding or, uh, or, or actually have access to potassium iodide or actually taking it as well. So I think for the fire and EMS and, and a law enforcement responder, do as you, uh, as you preach. I think the point is, is that we are not at a point where uh, we're actually even contemplating reaching for the potassium iodide as well. Uh, I, I understand and in conclusion, radiation is scary and most of the models that people get are from the media and movies and things that are not accurate. Uh, if you want information, uh, whether you at uh, your work site or at home, go onto these websites and there's all kinds of, of very quick radiation 101, what to do if, and, and, and it's a good, uh, a good resource for you. Go onto the website, you can find local Portland Fire uh, numbers, you can call me, or you can, uh, but I, I would direct you to the state because those are the, the, the experts and that's the, the, the leading voice for the, this issue. I thank you for uh, watching this. And uh, I thank you all for uh, participating in this. Thanks, thank you.